Hey class, in the next couple lessons, we're going to be taking a look at how you can use gears to change the performance of your robot. Can you think of some ways that gears are used out in the real world? Take a minute and think about a few. So there's a lot of places where gears are used. One example is cars. Do you know what kind of what part of a car it uses gears? The transmission uses lots of gears to shift from first to second to third gear. Drills use gears. Old clocks use gears. And bicycles use a type of gear that's connected by chains. There's a lot of other examples, but those are just four that I want you to think about how gears are used. Do you know what types of things gears can change? In this picture, we show some of the gears that are used on our VEX robot. We're going to be taking a look at three things that gears can change. Do you know what they are? Gears can change three things. Speed, torque, and direction. And all those need to be changed in different situations when you're building your robot. Let's take a look at each one of these a little bit more in detail. So gears can change direction, meaning that they can change from turning clockwise to tur turning counterclockwise. You'll see that when the gears and wheels work together. The next part is what's called torque. Torque is the force with which a motor turns a wheel. This is what we call turning power. In physics class, you'll take a look at what torque is, but I just want you to remember that torque is a fancy word, again, for turning power. The other thing that's important for gears is that gears can change speed, and that's how fast your robot can go. It's the rate at which a motor turns a wheel. So using different gears can change direction, speed, and torque of your robot. Can you think of some reasons why you'd want to change the torque, speed, and direction of your robot? Can you think of some situations in robotics when you would want to use gears to change direction? Maybe you have a wheel, two wheels, three wheels. Maybe you want them all turning in the same direction. How about torque? When would you want your robot to have turning power? Maybe you are playing some type of tug of war game and you go ahead and you're trying to pull the other robot and you want to make sure that you pull it with as much torque as possible so you add some turning power to your robot. Maybe you want your robot to climb up a steep incline. And so you've got to go ahead and gear up the robot so it can go up the incline of the hill. How about speed? Maybe you want your robot to be a dragster. You ever seen drag racing where the cars go super, super fast? Those interesting looking dragster cars? Maybe you want to change up the gears and have your robot go fast. There's a lot of different examples. Those are just a few. There are a variety of different types of gears that you can use on your VEX robotic system. The one that you're probably familiar with because we've used it already in class is what's called the spur gear. All right, these are some examples of spur gears. Spur gears are named after the spurs that cowboys used to wear on their boots. You might remember the San Antonio Spurs basketball team. Next gear is what's called the bevel gear. All right, now if you notice, the spur gears worked right next to each other. They've got to be parallel, all right? With bevel gears, bevel gears have an angle. Can you see that angle that they have? All right, that angle allows you to take a bevel gear, all right? So here's an example of a bevel gear. You can see the bevel gear has a little bit of an angle. So now I can take this bevel gear and add an angle to it right there. And then when I add my axle, I now have a gear that's rotating this way and a gear that's rotating that way. That's an example of a bevel gear. Another example of a gear that you could use in robotics is what's called the worm gear. All right, and here's the worm gear here. Now, can you think of some ways that you would want to use a worm gear? So with a worm gear, you go ahead and you take the gear. There it is right there, and it's got its teeth. All right, now you can take a axle, put it through that worm gear, and now you can take the spur gear, and here's a pretty badly drawn spur gear. Looks more like a flower. All right, that one will turn this way as the spur gear turns this way. All right, you might see that if you build some Legos. You might see that. Next one is what's called a rack gear. What is a rack gear? Well, the rack gear is this one up here. <clears throat> This one right here. Where would you see a rack gear? Well, if you've ever been to like Home Depot or Lowe's and you've ever seen a forklift, it's kind of an example of where you could use a rack gear. So here's my rack gear teeth. All right, here's my little spur gear. 
This gear's a little mesh in there. As this turns this way, it will allow that to go up and down. And that's, we'll go ahead and use my forklift there, example, to go ahead and pick boxes up. So as this turns, that will move up and down. So those are some gears. Now you might have noticed, well, what about that thing over here? What about this thing? <clears throat> that's what's called a differential. All right. What is a differential? Well, if you remember, we had these bevel gears here, right? So we take a bevel gear and we take one of them. And here's my axle. All right. Put that there. And then we take another bevel gear and put it this way and add my axle. And then we take a third bevel gear, put it there and add an axle. All right, now we have three bevel gears. The differential can go around all these pieces so that now when my drive shaft, here's my drive shaft from my engine, spins, it spins both of these bevel gears. However, now this bevel gear and this bevel gear can now spin at a different rate. If you ever follow a big box truck, all right, and you're behind the big box truck, here's the butt of a big box truck, you will notice in between the two axles is a big differential. All right, that big box in the back there, the big metal round thing is a differential, allowing this wheel to spin at a different rate than that wheel when they go around corners. So there's a lot more to know about all these things. You know, you could study all about the different other types of gears, but those are just four gears and a differential. And that's uh, one of the big things I wanted you to be able to do is understand the difference between all these gears. Oh, that's not the worm. That's the rack. And that's the worm. All right. There you go. So we primarily use spur gears. All right, and as I said, spur gears have to work right next to each other. That's how they have to work, or on an angle like that, okay? They can't work at any other angle. All right, spur gears have what are called external teeth, and they have teeth on the outside of the gear. And in our robotics kit, you will find that we have 12 tooth gears, 36 tooth gears, 60 tooth gears, and 84 tooth gears. Now there's a whole science of gear terminology. There's people that study how each individual teeth of the gear, all the different angles and the distances between the teeth and the angles and all that stuff. We're not gonna get into that. We're just gonna be taking a look at um, how gears are used, but I just want you to kind of understand that all these gears are gears that you would find in your box. Now, if you look at the number of teeth, 12, 36, 60, and 84, what are some things that you notice that they have uh, in relationship? Well, in a math world, you might notice that they're all divide, divided by 12, all right? 12 and 36, you can divide by 12. 60, you can divide by 12. 84, you can divide by 12. I want you to remember that because when we take a look at gear ratios next, we're gonna have to re remember how uh, 12 goes into those um, number of teeth and I also want you to know that they're all uh, in relationship because in having those so now that you know the different types of gears we talked a little bit about how many teeth gears have we talked about how gears are used the next topic that we're going to take a look at is how gears can help us in our robot and in our drills and our cars and all those things and the way they help us is this thing called mechanical advantage and that's how many times a machine multiplies force, all right? You as a human only have so much strength, but gears can allow us to multiply that force. And when we're talking about how gears multiply force, we're gonna talk about what's called a gear ratio. And if you look at this little picture right here, we've got two gears. We've got a little gear and a big gear. And by putting these two gears together, we can maybe get more speed, we can maybe get more torque that will help our robot do the job that we want it to do. So in our next lesson, we're going to take a look at what gear ratios are. You might already have in your mind some examples of ratios. Maybe you're big into sports or in the other types of activities where they're talking a lot about comparing two things and ratios. Uh, but that's what we're going to take a look at, at next. So to review, we talked about how gears are used. And so hopefully you now remember some examples of where gears are used. We talked about how gears can change. Gears can change three things. Do you remember what they are? Speed, torque, and direction. And lastly, what types of gears do we use? Well, 
in our class, you might remember that we use what's called the spur gear. And here's an example of a spur gear right here. All right. Thanks for listening.